Hi all, so this video is about limbic system and from an exam point of view the most important question that can be asked is of course the functions of limbic system. So actually I've already done a video on this but this is a more elaborate version of it. Okay. So from this picture it is quite clear that the limbic system was more important in animals and later on in humans it has a significant portion but significant role to play but not as important as that of lower animals right so there are two things to remember here that first of all limbic system is a ring shaped structure right and secondly it is the phylogenetically oldest part of the human brain actually it was earlier called rhinocephalon because they the scientists thought that it was related to smell okay so here you can the two points to remember that is that one it is ring shaped and it is phylogenetically the oldest part of the human brain and here you can see the different structures you can see that it is uh, it is here also you can see that it is ring shaped and it has a cortical as well as subcortical structures so here now we have to know how to draw the diagram of the limbic system so we move on to that so first we can draw the cortical structures and label them so the one end starts with the orbitofrontal cortex and then we've got the subcalosal gyrus very important cingulate gyrus and we've got the parahippocampal gyrus and finally the uncus so this completes the cortical structures that are present in the limbic system now we've got some subcortical structures also and the most important of it is hypothalamus and then we've got portions of basal ganglia anterior nuclei of thalamus the septum area para olfactory area amygdala and the hippocampus so these are the different cortical as well as subcortical structures that are present in the limbic system so this diagram is from uh, guyton hall textbook of physiology and i think it is it's quite easy to remember this right so the cortical structures are the orbitofrontal cortex subcalosal gyrus cingulate gyrus parahippocampal gyrus and uncus and the subcortical structures are hypothalamus, septum, paraolfactory area, anterior nuclei of thalamus, amygdala. Okay. So now we'll see the basic connections of limbic system. So why are the connections important? The connections are important because the functions are because of these connections. So remember that the connections of limbic system are very complex. So I've simplified it to a flowchart here. So this flowchart that I'm going to show just contains the basic things that you should know about the connections of the limbic system so we've got the cingulate gyrus cingulate gyrus connects to our hippocampus by hippocampus and hippocampus in turn connects to the hypothalamus via the fornix so remember hippocampus connects to the hypothalamus via fornix okay now again we've got connections from the amygdala to the hypothalamus via two routes First one is called striae terminalis. Striae terminalis. So amygdala connects to the hypothalamus via striae terminalis. And another connection is called ventral amygdalofugal fibers. Ventral amygdalofugal fibers. Okay. And then it connects to the septum via the median forebrain bundle. So these are the important terms that you should know when it comes to the connections of limbic system. You can build up on this base, but these terms must be there. That hippocampus connects to the hypothalamus via fornix and uh, the amygdala via striae terminalis and ventral amygdalofugal fibers and septum via the median forebrain bundle. Okay. So now we will move on to our topic proper which is functions of the limbic system. So functions of the limbic system as I always say can be remembered by the mnemonic limbic. So we will see what it stands for. It stands for learning and long term memory integration of olfactory signals, motivation, behavior and emotions, influence of sexual behavior and control of autonomic functions. So when you remember like this, it will be easier for you to answer this for the exam. So we'll see each one by one. What is the role of limbic system in the first function that is learning and long term memory? So the major role in learning and long term memory is played by the hippocampus. So you know this uh, is the structure here. This is hippocampus. So it is in the hippocampus that there is memory formation, especially explicit memory formation occurs in hippocampus. That means uh, the memory about certain events. Okay. And 
memory consolidation that is conversion of short term memory to long term memory occurs in the hippocampus and emotional memories are connected to this hippocampus emotional memory means suppose we see a thing uh, like uh, suppose we see a rose and we get reminded of a, a previous situation that we are in so that is called emotional memories okay and the major circuit or connection that helps in this process is called the paper circuit okay so we'll see what the circuit is the circuit is basically the hippocampus connects to the hypothalamus or the mammillary body via the fornix and from the mammillary body through the mammillothalamic tract the information is passed on to the anterior thalamus and from the anterior thalamus to the cingulate gyrus the information is passed on and from where it is passed on back to the hippocampus so like this way through this circuit there is consolidation of memories okay so this is a very important circuit that is important for learning and memory and you can remember it as match that is mammillary body anterior thalamus cingulate gyrus and hippocampus clear so the apparent aspect of this is that if there is a lesion the person can have anterograde amnesia what is meant by anterograde amnesia it means that he cannot remember what is happening after that trauma okay so inability of an individual to establish a new long term memory of those type of information that forms the basis of intelligence so he can learn new skill and all but he cannot uh, establish new memories new long term memories okay so here the lesion is in the hippocampus and it is usually seen following seizures clear next we'll move on to the next function of limbic system which is integration of olfactory signals so the major structure involved in this is amygdala so amygdala is involved in the emotional response to smell so if you smell something you might so suppose you smell a uh, your favorite dish which is made your, by my mother or anybody so that will that is that smell will be connected to that person right so that is called emotional response to smell and the major cortical area that is involved with it is the entorhinal cortex so entorhinal cortex is concerned with olfactory memories so that is why the limbic system was formerly called the rhine saffron because of its relation to this smell so now we'll see what is the pathway involved in this olfaction so see olfactory receptors detect the smell and those signals are transmitted via the axons of the olfactory neurons to the olfactory bulb and from the olfactory bulb the information is passed on to the primary olfactory cortex and also the entorhinal cortex and then finally to the amygdala so thus the amygdala and the entorhinal cortex are involved in this olfactory pathway and that is how they can create olfactory memories clear so now we'll move on to the next function which is motivation so what is meant by motivation so here you can see that this is an experimental setup in which there was a lever here okay and if the rat presses a lever it is going to stimulate a specific area in the brain okay so that area was actually called the ventral tegmental area so scientists found out that when the electrode was kept at the ventral tegmental area the rat continuously started a uh, kicking on that lever okay so that is how they found out that there is an area that acts like a reward center which motivates the rat to press the lever more okay so the definition of motivation is it is a desire arising in the mind or produced by an external stimulus to do something physical or mental so the main reward system present in the brain is called the ventral tegmental area or vta so there are many dopaminergic pathways that start from the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus nucleus accumbens so it is clear in this pictures here see this is the ventral tegmental area which is our reward center now from this reward center to this nucleus accumbens there is a dopaminergic pathway okay see from the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus accumbens there is a dopaminergic pathway and it, it is the stimulation of this pathway this dopaminergic pathway causes that reward sensation and motivates that individual okay so here we got the flow chart 
from the ventral tegmental area through the nucleus accumbens the information reaches the thalamus and from there to the prefrontal cortex and finally to the amygdala there are interconnections through in this uh, loop so that because of which there, there is motivation in this circuit okay so since as a reward system there must be a punishment system also right so there is a punishment area inside our brain and it is the, there are many punishment areas of which the major one is this periaqueductal gray area periaqueductal gray area okay which is involved in the punishment so stimulation of this area will cause fear okay so the applied aspect of this is addiction so as i said before the rat continuously pressed on the lever because his ventral tegmental area of the reward system was being activated so similarly in addiction what happens is there is continuous stimulation of this reward center so first of all what is addiction addiction is defined as a compulsion to repeatedly use a substance in spite of knowing the negative impact of the substance on health and the usual substances that are used are morphine heroin cocaine amphetamine ethyl alcohol and nicotine so the mechanism is that it will increase the dopamine secretion in the reward system of the brain so that is why this uh, reward system is activated and the person will feel like continuously stimulating that pathway but what is the problem with each time this reward system is activated the amount of dopamine required will become more and more okay so that is the prop that is when it comes to addiction so that is how addiction plays an important role or addiction is applied aspect for limbic system next we'll see the another uh, action or function of limbic system which is its role in behavior and emotions so i'll explain that with the help of an example so suppose we see something okay suppose i see something something like a rope or something so first thing that our brain tells us that might be a snake can run but then later on we'll look at closer and we'll see that it was, it was not a snake it was just a rope okay it was just a coiled uh, structure at that time the brain will tell the cortex will tell the amygdala don't worry there is no danger you can be calm okay so this is how our brain analyzes threat clear yeah? so here initially even before seeing it properly our mind already had a fear that it might be a snake and that we have to run clear so that is brought about by this amygdala the part of a limbic system so the limbic system helps to pattern our behavior appropriate for each occasion it the, the functions or uh, it functions help it helps in behavior awareness at a semi conscious level even before we are fully aware or fully conscious we have that sensation of fear right so that is the main function of limbic system it detects a threat be it visual auditory or olfactory and triggers a fear response so here at this juncture we have to know more about these emotions here we've just talked about fear but there are many other emotions also so we will we'll see more about emotions so what is emotion emotion is a complex feeling state with psychic somatic and behavior components that is related to mood and effect okay so it is psychic somatic and behavioral component that is related to mood and effect so it has some mental components so first one is called cognition cognition means awareness of sensation and its cause so in our previous example seeing that rope is the cognition okay and effect is a feeling itself you are feeling that it it might be a snake that is the effect and conation is that urge to take action should i run or not that is the conation so you you see something you have that fear you want to take action so that is cognition effect and conation and along with that you have physical components like stimulation of the sympathetic system your heart rate increases you start sweating so that is the physical component so we'll see each emotion one by one first one is fear what is meant by fear fear is a fleeing or why fear or uh, avoidance reaction so all these three terms are synonymous and experimentally it occurs due to stimulation of hypothalamus and amygdala so amygdala encodes memories that you work with that is why even if even when you see a rope you have a memory that snakes can be poisonous and they look something like this so that so it is a amygdala that encode memories that evoke fear okay so that is about fear 
so the next emotion is rage rage means feeling very angry so it also it is also a protective emotion because it helps the animal or the person to be in an attacking or a fighting mood so the rage response to minor stimuli usually we have a rage response only to major stimuli but it can occur to minor stimuli also in the following conditions that is after removal of neocortex or uh, if there's a lesion in the lateral hypothalamus or stimulation of the amygdala nuclei so why do you think there is there is an increased rage in all these situations we'll see with the help of a flow chart see a cortex always inhibits our hypothalamus whereas hypothalamus tonically activates the amygdala so we know that amygdala is a center for this emotions so actually hypothalamus always stimulates this but hypothalamus is kept under control by the cortex so if the cortex is not there what will happen hypothalamus will continue to stimulate the amygdala so there will be rage right and what if there is a lesion in uh, the lateral hypothalamus again the there will be amygdala being stimulated so there will be rage and if there is a stimulation of amygdala nuclei again there will be rage so all these conditions will cause rage okay another emotion is placidity so placidity means calmness and this can occur when there is a bilateral lesion of the amygdala so if amygdala is removed the person will be very calm and he will not be afraid or he will not be angry and that is called placidity the next emotion is anxiety anxiety is characterized by intensively unpleasant feeling of threat to one's own self and it is usually seen in lesions of anterior end of the temporal lobe so the next function of the limbic system is its influence on sexual behavior so limbic system has got a very complex influence on sexual behavior so we will see how so the limbic cortex and the neocortex stimulate partner seeking behavior so if there is a lesion in the limbic cortex or the neocortex there will be inhibition of the sexual behavior but the piriform cortex which overlies the amygdala it usually inhibits the sexual drive in males so what happens if there is a lesion there it will produce hypersexuality so you can see that the limbic system has got two different effects influence on the sexual behavior so the applied aspect of this is the famous syndrome called kluver bluesy syndrome what is kluver bluesy syndrome it occurs when there is a bilateral lesion on the anterior part of temporal lobe along with amygdala so it was discovered by two scientists kluver and bluesy and that is why it is called kluver bluesy syndrome so the symptoms of the patient here will be hyperphagia hyperorality and hypersexuality and they actually found out found this out by doing bi bilateral temporal lobectomies in monkeys okay so that is how they found out that if the temporal lobe is if there's a lesion in the uh, anterior part of temporal lobe the person will have these symptoms due to the involvement of amygdala along with the temporal lobe okay and finally we have got the very important function which is control of autonomic functions obviously because hypothalamus is a part of limbic system so hypothalamus is a master ganglion and it is uh, it is a head ganglion of the autonomic system so naturally limbic system is also involved in the control of autonomic functions so through hypothalamus it stimulation uh, stimulation of limbic system through hypothalamus can cause autonomic responses so during emotions because of that during emotions the person will have many cardiovascular effects respiratory effects as well as gastrointestinal effects the cause of that is because hypothalamus is a important role for uh, the autonomic system clear so with that we conclude the fun important functions of the limbic system so to summarize first and foremost we've got learning and long term memory second integration of the olfactory signals third motivation fourth behavior and emotion fifth influence on sexual behavior and sixth control of autonomic functions so i hope this concept is clear thank you